Good morning, Hyderabad. How are you doing today? Wow, what a crowd. You know how many people are there today in the auditorium? Any guesses? There were 3,500 registrations, and only 1,200 of them are able to make it out here. Thanks for the support. How many of you were here yesterday? So welcome back. So people who are coming here for the first time, welcome to G India 2012. We have been traditionally doing G Indias in emerging markets for quite some time. We started this in year 2010, and we started doing a lot of such awareness programs in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and other emerging markets. And for the very first time, we have brought it to India, and we are on a five-city tour. We started with Chennai around a couple of weeks back, then we went to Bangalore just around two weeks back, and yesterday and today, we are in Hyderabad. After this, we'll be in Delhi, followed by Mumbai. So what are these G days all about? And this, as I said, is all about the awareness program. Google traditionally has, is coming out with lots and lots of technologies. At any point in time, there are 100 different products that we'll be working on. So what's the best channel by which we'll be able to evangelize and make yourself aware about the Google products? So this is the kind of forum that we are talking about. Those are G days. G days are your awareness program. These are your technology as well as your business awareness programs. And our endeavor at Google is to make technologies much more simpler, faster, and much more intuitive for each one of us to use it in our daily lives. So we have got a great set of uh, tracks today. We've got four tracks. If you're looking at your, each one of you has got a badge. If you're looking at it, they'll clearly mention what these four tracks consist about. Track one is dedicated to, today it's been dedicated to Android. Okay, and this is track one. And track two is one towards my right. And that is dedicated to maps. Track three, which is right outside the main door, that is uh, concentrating on all your Google APIs. And track four is regarding our partners. We'll be having partners from NIT and so on and so forth. And we'll also be having women entrepreneur programs. So take next few minutes to decide what are the kind of tracks that you want to attend at this point in time, okay? Look at your badges, because all are happening simultaneously. And you can attend only one track at a time. Having said that, we are not saying just go and barge in, in any track at any point in time, but make it very clear which is the track which is important to you. If it is Android, so be it, you can stay here. If it is Maps, you have to go to track two. General APIs, track three, and four, it's all about our partners. And this is how your badge looks like. You got your name tag, and you got all the tracks on the second and third page, and you got uh, a map in case you are lost. And the most important announcement, yeah, food and beverages is right towards the left. So this is the main hall. This is track three. So there are close to 400 million Android devices activated, making Android the real superstar. Do you agree, guys? Yeah? So it's a superstar on the tablet as well as the mobile. But do you think Android is a superstar when it comes to the silver screen? I'm talking about movies. No? You'll be surprised. You know what? Mr. Android has been invited by the biggest of Hollywood and Bollywood directors to cast him in, his, in their movies. Just check this out. James Cameron was all set to cast Android in Avatar. But the problem arose when he couldn't decide which of the many avatars he has to use, because Android has got so many avatars, right? Next, it was Superman. Come on, some round of applause, guys. <laughs> then it was Superman. But why could Android even refuse Superman movie? Any ideas? I'll be giving out cool mugs if you are coming out with some wacky answers. Why? Come on, louder. Come on, wackier than that. Oh, he's busy with us, okay. Face it, guys, he's faster than a bird or a plane. How about this? 
He was approached for even Spider-Man, and he even refused that. Can you beat that? What was Mr. Android thinking? Well, all he had to say at the end of the day is, you call that a web? And coming to your local movies, come on, Gajani. So he felt so embarrassed. You know Android's memory management skills, and in Gajani, he doesn't have any memory at all. He said, come on, yeah, it's a big insult for me. He rejected him on that. And this one is interesting, guys. He was approached to be the lead at Rawan. Why, the, why on earth will Mr. Android reject Shah Rukh Khan? Any ideas for that? Get as wacky as possible. What's that? OK. Some more answers, some more. Oh, he can't stammer. Yeah, that's a nice one, yeah. <laughs> but the fact is, with cupcakes, donuts, eclairs, ice cream sandwich, do you think Karina Kapoor would have had a shot at size zero? No. OK. Finally, to Godfather. Unfortunately, they didn't make him an offer he couldn't refuse. And how about this, guys? Come on! When it comes to this movie, Iga, how many of you have watched this movie? How many of you like it? No? <laughs> he refused this because he, didn't, he couldn't believe in the story of incarnation. And androids will always create more buzz, even without wings, right? Okay. So with that, we also come to some serious business now. So if at all, how many of you like Google and want to be associated with Google? Everyone? That's great. So if you feel that we can contribute to Google in any small way, whether it can be, it could be talking about, if you are aware about some cool Google technologies and you want to spread the awareness about Google technologies to your friends, to your family members, or you can create your own Google business circles, you can join the tech user group. You can share your success stories. You can also support startups and help in the last that, and the least that you can do is help in our events like this, because these are large scale mammoth events. And if you're interested in it, there's a URL out there, bit.ly slash help Google. And you can be associated with Google in a long term basis as volunteers. Okay, and there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of volunteers who are working with us, and there's a lot of learning curve when they are working with us. And throughout the day, for all the sessions out here, there are some very cool, how many of you saw the auto rickshaws over there in Google Colors? You liked it? I think that's a great photo, photo opportunity out there. And if you are able to ask some really cool questions, each one of them would be getting a very cool uh, auto rickshaw tuk tuk mugs out there. Okay, so try to impress uh, uh, the speakers as much as possible and try to get the cool mugs. And here's the good part. Whenever you go to any of the conferences, the usual thing is, OK, fine, switch off your mobile phones, your whatever you have under the sun. But today, Google is giving high-speed internet free for all of you guys. OK? So switch on your mobile, switch on your tablet, switch on everything, every connected device that you got under the sun, because we are offering you free internet. And the ID is G-Day, and the password is G-Day at 2012. As you've got really jam-packed back-to-back sessions, it becomes very much imperative that you are there on time for each of the sessions. And most of the time, speakers don't like a lot of interruptions when people are coming and going out. So clearly mark out which are the kind of sessions that you want to attend throughout the day. And please be there on time. And we'll also, we started around 10 minutes late, but we'll try to catch up as much as possible. If you're looking just outside the main hall, there is something called the chill out zone, where there are 15 to 20 Indian games that you can play. If you're if you getting bored of any of the sessions and you want to just chill out, just go over there and have some good time. And there are demo pods right outside. When you turn towards the right, uh, there, are, uh, there are close to around eight to nine demo pods. And there'll be people who will be able to answer all of your questions, which could be regarding from your Android to your maps and so on and so forth. 
And the presentations would be sent across to you in next couple of days for all the attendees out here, okay? And one of the most important thing is we would be sending you a feedback survey form regarding the entire day's proceedings as to what did you feel about the entire day. And uh, please do take out a couple of minutes of your valuable time and fill it across because that will become the base in order to improve the content, the quality of content for our next events. And photos will be on uh, Google Plus, and the hashtag again is slash JIndia. Um, yesterday, we were trending at number six on Twitter, okay? And that's a huge, huge ach achievement. And there were 84,000 followers, and we made 1.16 million impressions on Twitter, okay? And let's see today whether we are able to break the record and whether we will be there in top two or even number one in India when it comes to. And I think we guys can do it, isn't it, guys? Yeah? Okay. And I will also want to shout out to all the Googlers out here. There are 35 Googlers who are come here to be spending next eight hours with you, and they come from different parts of the globe. So can I ask all the Googlers to please stand up, and can you give a huge round of applause to them, please? Thank you. And also a very special mention to all our technical contributors out here who have come from different parts of India. There are close to 20 people wearing blue shirts who are sitting in the front row. And these are the, kind of, these are the people who will be able to answer you all the questions regarding Google and their volunteers for us. So all the technical contributors, please stand up. So, yeah, plus one for your attention so far. It's been fantastic. And if at all you got any of the success stories that you want to uh, share with uh, Google, uh, as a developer, how many developers out here? Wow, all of them are developers. That's great. And how many of you want to start their own product development companies? How many of you want to be entrepreneurs? There's less. I think I, I wanted each one of you to start your own companies. Right? Um, so if you've got any kind of success stories, if you want to talk about your struggle and your success, please do write in to us. Please do share your success stories with us. And to know what I'm talking about, let's play a video on developer stories. The web is always changing. And the way we access it is changing. The source of that change is you. Developers all around the world who are using our tools to create great new things. And with so many tools, the sky's the limit. But it can't happen without you and your ideas. We want to know you better, so we've created a new place just for that. To hear from you. We want to hear what inspires you as a developer, and how we can help. Here you can record a video, share stories with us, and more. Let us know what being a Google developer means to you. And you can talk to us in person at Google Developer Events all over the world so that we can learn how to support you better. Oh, by the way, we also started rolling out a new site for Google developers. Not just code, but community, news, tools, and other resources. And cake. Like any open source project, it's a work in progress. With your help, it can be great. Developers.google.com slash stories. Change is important to the web. Help us keep changing it together. So tell us your stories. Tell us more about your struggle. And we don't mind even if it is a bad struggle, but at the end of the day, you are able to walk ahead straight with a lot of dignity and being proud about what you have been doing. My keynote today is structured into two parts. One is I'll be talking about what are the kind of opportunities that developers in this region has got when they got to be working with Google. And my second part of my keynote would cover my favorite part, which is about innovation at Google. How many of you are really interested in know about how do we innovate at Google? Okay, so I'll be, give, I'll be sharing some of the inside stories about what is it that Google does differently because of which we are the key innovators. When it, we innovate more than around 200 or 300 new products every year, and that takes different shapes and forms over a period of time, and we curate it 
and finally it takes uh, it becomes a one uh, big product at the end of the day. So let's start going. Recently, a 244-year-old tradition recently came to an end. Any guesses of what I'm talking about? I think everyone attended yesterday. I think people are uh, smart ones. OK, I'm not giving you any marks for that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Encyclopedia Encyclopedia Britannica stopped their print editions last year. And it was unfortunate, but they blamed the internet fad and Wikipedia for uh, what has been happening. And as kids, when you're, uh, uh, it used to be a price position, right? You got this Encyclopedia Britannica with your golden uh, pages at the corners, and everyone used to be so much in love with it. But they, they didn't catch up with the technology, and it was more and more people were consuming content online. And I don't want any of the businesses to be shutting down like this, and we would be able to teach you how is it that you'll be able to keep in touch with the consumption of content online. Coming to some of the important statistics, almost around 2 billion internet users in the world. And 40% of the planet Earth will be online by 2015, and that's a huge, huge number. And if you're looking at the kind of growth, I think most, the majority of the growth will be coming from emerging markets like India and China and so on and so forth. Because if you're looking at US and North American market and Europe, most of the thing is it's, it's almost saturated. You've got huge penetration out there, but the additional users will be coming from emerging markets. So currently, okay, fine. So again, one more trivia. India ranks stash in terms of number of internet users. I know everyone attended, man. I know it. <laughs> Even before I'm asking the question, you know the answer. Okay. Yeah, so uh, China leads with around uh, 513 million, followed by US with 245, and India has got 170 million internet users. So currently, we've got 120 million internet users, and by 2015, we'll be having 300 million internet users in India. And it's the third largest internet market globally, and there are 70 million mobile internet users. And trust me, guys, if I'm talking about another 180 million internet users, we do predict that almost around 80% of them would be accessing the internet only on their mobile phones, and that will be their only way to get on internet. We are not talking about desktop, we are not talking about laptops, we are not talking about tablets. It will be only through their mobile. Interestingly, in India, 30% of them are spending their media time on internet. It could be YouTube videos, it could be any other video forms. They are spending so much of time on consuming this kind of a media content. And we also predict that in terms of e-commerce, it'll shoot, it'll raise to around 40 billion by 2015. And India has got a very young internet, uh, uh, is getting younger by the day. When you are saying that, I mean, around 30% of the population is less than 15 years old. And we do predict that all this population who are less than 15 years old, they are the people who will be adapting at a very fast rate. Okay, even in tier two and tier three cities, when we are going and talking to people, I think they are aware about internet and there's a lot of propensity for these young kids to adapt internet very easily. So Google is pretty much invested in growing uh, Indian internet, and we are, doing, we are taking some small baby steps uh, in order to know what exactly are the kind of hindrances for people. If, if you're looking at tier one cities, you already got internet and there's a large amount of adoption over there, but if you're looking at tier two and tier three, uh, there are a lot of internet service providers who are already laid down their cables, but still the adoption is not more. You know, you got housewives, educated housewives who are there, but they are still not accessing internet. You got retired people who are sitting at home doing nothing, but still they don't access internet. What's the reason? So we are doing a lot of, conducting a lot of such studies on what are the kind of entry barriers that they have so that they are not inter uh, interested in accessing internet. Is it the quality of content? Do you have enough local content or not? Or is it, is it so tough to go ahead and launch a browser? Okay, so we are doing a lot of such in-depth studies on that. And apart from that, we have 
invested in a program called Internet, Google Internet Bus. How many of you are aware about this program? It was there even in Andhra Pradesh. It was there in Hyderabad. So we covered 50,000 kilometers in the last two and a half years, covering 140 towns and 12 states. And they, we got 8 million first-time Internet users, and 2.5 million of them are now, after, uh, after we went and talked to them, after around six weeks, they are hooked onto Internet, and they are uh, going on and accessing it at least once a week. And we are also helping a lot of SMBs and SMEs in order to, we are running a program called Get Your Business Online. We help you out with the website, we help you out with hosting, and if you are a small SMB or SME, we'll help you with your entire website kind of a process. Here's some more trivia. India is it's the third largest base of SMBs in the world, and we've got 35 million registered SMBs in India. Okay? And out of which, only 400K of them have got some kind of a website. And there's a potential for 8 million of them who can leverage the internet. Okay? So having said that, there's a scope for a lot of developers out here to be working with this kind of SMBs and SMEs in order to set their website, in order to get there, depending on what kind of audience that you're targeting in terms of your sales pitch, it could be you can uh, see to it that they have their basic pr presence on the web, and if they are much more advanced, you can see to it that they have a mobile presence, so on and so forth. Coming to online search, this is an amazing uh, number that we are really proud of at Google. The online search has been growing exponentially, and we have seen a growth of close to 20x time in the last five years. Okay? And what is it that people are searching for? They are searching for product and information. So uh, almost around 95% of the time, unfortunately, they are not able to find the product and service that they are looking out for because the SMBs and SMEs are not there online to provide their request at that point in time. So that's a missed opportunity. And here's the opportunity for the developers. So the e-commerce in India is expected to grow 6x times to around 40 billion, as I mentioned, in 2015. And almost 80% of it is coming from travel. When is the last time you stood in a queue for your railway tickets or your airline tickets, right? You always do it online. Almost 99% of us, uh, at least in the IT industry, yeah, we do it online. So if you're looking at the overall average, almost 80% of the common man, yeah, public is doing it uh, uh, online. And finance, insurance, and broking has moved online too, right? And by 2015, we also predict that one-third of online users will be buying something online. And we always believed that in India, we always use um, mobile or any other form of device in order to just do the search, and we'll go and buy it offline. But that's, that's a myth. Our study clearly says by 2015, people would be consuming, people would be making actual buying decisions online. So that's a good news for all the developers. And if you are in business that can shift to online transaction, have you set your online store yet? If you are not, that's again a missed opportunity. So for developers, now I've painted the entire picture about what the India market looks like, what's the kind of opportunity, and now it's time for you to sit back and think about what's the line of business that I should be able to cater to. This is the statistics. Our job is to give you the statistics about what is happening in the industry, what's happening in India. And it is the job of the developers to figure out what is the kind of opportunity that is there for me and what is my core competence and where I'll be able to make money. And Google will be there throughout you know, to be in part and parcel of your brainstorming sessions and so on and so forth. And coming to your mobile users, mobile users in India are quickly growing too. I said it's 70 million now, and we expect 132 million people to be accessing only through their mobile by 2012. So one in three mobile users in India will be access internet through uh, mobile by 2015. That's again what I spoke about. And this is very important, guys. Uh, the app usage in, in countries like India and China is exploding. It's going out of the, uh, through the roof. Look at the kind of uh, engagement that you got uh, in India. You got more than 400% increase year on year. 
Okay, that's the amount of time. If someone was spending one minute on an app, they are spending now four minutes on their app. If someone was spending 100 minutes on their app, now they are spending 400 minutes on their app. It could be any app, it could be even game, we call it an app, but there's a lot of consumption of internet and there's a lot of consumption of content on the mobile phones. And look at China, guys. I, I don't know what they do for, I think most of the time they'll be on the app itself, 11x times. That, that's really insane. So I'm proud to talk about some of important statistics of uh, Android. We just made this couple of very large announcements that all of us should be proud about at Google I.O. last month. So we were doing something like around 100 million active, uh, overall uh, activations in 2011. And any guesses of, I think I already said this, how many Android phones are there in the market today? We have got 400 million in 2012. That deserves a huge round of applause, guys. In terms of activations in 2011, we were doing 400K activations every day. And today, now, in 2012, we are activating 1 million every day. That means 12 activations every second. And when you're looking at growth of Android in India, we are proud to say that it has grown by 500% in India. So if you're looking at the smartphone usage, Android usage in India, people are able to take constructive action after searching for uh, local information. Once you are searching for an example, you are searching for, I don't want to come back to paradise, I think uh, people have talked more about it. Um, when, once you search for pearls in uh, Hyderabad or so on and so forth, 40% of them have called back the business or uh, after searching it on the uh, mobile. If I'm searching for pearls, let me repeat it again. If I'm searching for pearls in Hyderabad, and if I get the result, 40% of them have called back the establishment in order to uh, make up a purchasing transaction. And 30% have bought stuff, 40% have called them for inquiry, and 30% have bought it through the mobile. And these are statistics that we have after we have done a consumer study. So as I said, it's never late to be early. So if you do not have a mobile presence, and if you feel that your potential consumers, your potential customers are there on the mobile, on the web, just have your mobile presence right now. So India is in the midst of a digital revolution. And you want to take part into that, it's completely left to you. I have tried my best to enthuse you on what are the kind of opportunities, and I'm pretty much sure that you'll be able to take the plunge. So with that, I come to end of my first part of my presentation and coming to the interesting part now. I want to talk a little bit about innovation at Google, okay? So when, first, when you're talking about innovation, the first question would be, why innovate, okay? If, if you talk to people, it's uh, in the good old days, like, yeah, everything was fine, and I used to get my two square meals, and why do you need to improve? But as a human race, it's always imperative that we have to keep improving and there's always a lot of inquisitiveness in terms of what we want to do and what we want to achieve. We want to get things faster. We want to get things better. We want to get things cheaper. That's one of the three, these are the three reasons why people need to innovate and people are innovating across the globe. If you're looking at, let's take a case study about India as a market and why we need to innovate at Google and in India. If you're looking at the kind of challenges that we are forcing people to innovate, if I'm taking India, we are talking about expensive mobile internet access, okay? So I'm talking about not high, high quality content for people to get online. So that's one of the major uh, entry barriers according to the survey that we have done. And there's lack of online form of payment. So these are the three things that we feel at Google which are the hindrances and that's the reason we at Google together how to innovate. So whenever we got a problem, we always start with, for any great problem, we should have a great mission and a vision statement. A statement where at the end of the day, you should be able to solve a problem. A vision should always be think big, but start small. And the Google's missions in, uh, 
in, 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 uh, especially in India, is make internet an integral part of your daily life. So that's where we start with our mission and a vision statement. We identify a problem, and we go to the next step. When you're talking about the mission and vision statement, we come out with what are the kind of barriers that we have got you know, to make our uh, dreams come true. One is your access. How do you reduce access as a barrier for all potential users? Another one is relevance. If someone is accessing the content in Hyderabad in the age group of 60 to 80 years old, and are you able to see to it that is there enough local Telugu content for them to access or not? Okay, so that's what I mean by relevance. Is it relevant to the target audience? We might be able to enthuse, we might be able to do everything under the sun and say, hey, go ahead and access internet, but what will they do? Well, they launch the browser and do what? When there's no content for them to browse, right? And the third one is sustainability. Help, helping them to build an internet ecosystem in India that is viable and sustainable in the long term. And second thing that we do very uh, creatively at uh, Google is fostering entrepreneurship, okay? And whenever we start a project at Google, uh, in a typical company, product development company, uh, in a startup, it's just two or three people. If you're talking about a team of around six people and you've got your product manager and you've got your UI UX uh, designer and you've got the actual coder and you've got the sales guys, you always see to it that the product manager or a couple of core team members get and they conceptualize the product. But in Google, we are talking about ideas can come from anywhere and the entire team gets together when you're conceptualizing the idea. We also got a huge fix where we are able to constantly feed in ideas at any point in time. If I go and check out that list, there are close to 100,000 ideas put in by 30,000 Googlers so far. That's available for all of us to see internally. And if I feel that I can contribute to that idea, the big idea, right? I can go ahead and team with that uh, go ahead and team uh, with that uh, person, and I can take it to the next level. And then the idea goes to the next stage, and we conceptualize it, and so on and so forth. So we have got a bottom-up culture where multiple ideas and products have emerged, and this has been very successful in it. And we have got a pretty much flat management structure. There are uh, seven layers from your software engineer all the way to Larry, and it's pretty uh, flat. And we also got this concept of 20% time, okay? So if you're interested in XYZ product or project, your manager would give you 20% of your time to invest in whatever you are really passionate about. You're not questioned on that, okay? I don't think so how many companies would be able to give this kind of a leeway to their employees to say, hey, I won't care what you do for uh, two and a half hours of your uh, uh, daily life in your office, right? But we do it at uh, Google, and you'll be surprised that more than 40% of Google's products have come out as 20% ideas. So ideas can come from anywhere. It is not that the product managers are the only guys who can come out with ideas. A UI, UX designer, a testing guy can come out with great ideas, and that will be your next product of the future. So you have to take ideas really, really seriously. Here's one example of the idea. How many of you know have seen YouTube Interactive? This was done, this idea was, uh, uh, had come out from an intern who worked with uh, Google for two months. And this is one of the major, major uh, enhancements for YouTube recently. And again, there's one more concept of wrong Bob, you know? If you got uh, two Sunil, Sunil Rao and Sunil Surnarayana, it says, are you looking for the right one? So all these concepts came out with, from interns. And later on, this became huge enhancements uh, in our products to come by. The third and most important thing is we have to be really open and share everything. What do I mean by that? We have got, uh, on our intranet, we have got something called Momo, and um, we, if I go to my page, or even if I can see Larry's page and Sergey's page, and it clearly says what are the kind of initiatives that they are working today, for next week, and for the next month. So I know what my manager is doing, I know what my peers are doing, and I can, if I want, I can go ahead and collaborate with anyone if they are doing any kind of an interesting project. 
okay? So everything is out there, and snippets is what we talk about, your weekly reports, which is available for all of us to see at any point in time. So Google has released more than 2,000 code bases and well over 30 million lines of code as open source. And developers can build applications by writing on top of it our existing products and platform, and we do believe that going open and sharing everything and contributing to the open source is the way to go in the future. So Android is the fastest growing mobile platform in the world, and we've already seen the numbers. We've got 400 million Android devices which has been activated, and we've got tons of activations. And the fourth, impo fourth important thing is it's all about data, data, and data. So what do I mean by this? To give an example of this, we, when you're talking about we, I'm talking about from the hats, I'm wearing a hat of a product manager. We do not take decisions at an emotional level. We do not say, okay, fine. If you're looking at the search result, you're looking at one form of blue out there, right? How do you think we came out with this color blue? We collected data from 40 million users, and it's not the product manager who decided. We decided, we experimented with 40 different shades of blue, and finally, we decided that the propensity to click on the link for this shade of the blue was the maximum, and that's why we went with this blue. So we do not take uh, emotional decisions. We are strictly data-driven, and all the decisions at Google are made based on the market, what the market needs, and what not, what the product manager needs. Fifth and most important thing, users first and money second. How many of you believe in this concept? Why are the others not believing? Do you feel it's money first and users second? Okay. So we do believe that users always come first. You have a credible base of your user base and the monetization models, we will figure it out over a period of time. I'm not saying that do not think about your monetization models now before starting. It's always go good to have a monetization model in the long term, but do not take that as the whole and sole factor for deciding on your product. Concentrate on your product in terms of UI, UX, concentrate on the quality of the product, get your users hooked on to it, let there be repeat usage of your product, and the money will definitely follow. One piece of advice, I've met a lot of product companies, one piece of advice which I want to give to all the budding entrepreneurs out here is, do not come out with a product thinking in mind that if it is free, anyway they'll consume it. Always think about a product when you're coming out saying, each of the consumer will pay $1,000 for that product. Then you'll come out with a great product, okay? So if you're looking at what we are doing on, uh, at Google, we always see to it that um, our enhancements are coming out at a later point in time, but we concentrate on how to get it faster, how to see to it that the UI and UX is much more simpler and as intuitive. So making products run faster is given more importance was a, was a we developing new product features. We also are pretty much into ecosystem building. We do believe that you can't do things alone, and you have to have a very good network of ecosystem partners in order to thrive, in order to go at a rapid pace. And we are, here are some of the initiatives that we are taking. We've got the university program, we've got the Google Student Ambassador program, where we are recruiting close to 800 student ambassador program in a tier one and tier two colleges across India. We have got faculty summits and we also got a lot of funding programs. And we also have what you call the Google Developer Group. How many of you are from GDG Hyderabad out here? Any representation? No. Nope. So uh, we have got Google Developer Group, we have got Google Business Group, we have got close to 16 chapters which are active all across in India. And Bangalore chapter is one of the most active chapters when it comes to GDG. So if at all you want to start a new business or a technology chapter in your region, you might be coming from Vizag or any other parts of Andhra. If you want to start it, please do get in touch with us and we'll help you and we'll let you know as to how to start this. 
Sixth and the most important thing, we do believe that speed really matters, you know? Gone were the days where innovation cycle used to be four, five, or six years, okay? When I used to visit IASC, um, there used to be people who used to do a project for the innovation cycles used to be even six or seven years, okay? But here at Google, we are talking about innovation cycles which are not more than 24 months. How many of you like the first version of Android that we released? It's a handful, yeah. I didn't like it either. So, yeah, we do believe in releasing the product at the earliest, but the beauty of it is we evolve fast. We take the feedback extremely seriously, and we iterate in such a way that we are able to come out with a kick-ass product in the next couple of uh, uh, months from there. Okay? One of the major and the most important differentiator when it comes to Google is we do believe in, if at all your product is not flying, we do believe in the concept of fail fast and fail gracefully and learn from it. If you're looking at speed, again, how many of you have seen Google Instant, right? So I think we are saved so many years of your life. We are not asking you to type everything. We want everything to be done very fast, and speed does really, really matter for all of us. So just to uh, summarize, be, afraid, be aware but not afraid. So these are the six steps which are talking about cool things that we are, are doing when you're talking about innovation at Google. Have a mission that matters, which solves a problem. Foster entrepreneurship. It can, ideas can come from anywhere in any part of your company. Be open and share everything. Our ideas at Google, everything is available. All 100,000 ideas are, are available for each and every Googler to go in and access it and collaborate. Users come first and money follows. It's all about data and speed does matter. And today I'm going to be making one more announcement. Unfortunately, the deadline for this is August 24th. That's another got two more days. We have got the Google App Developer Challenge. Okay? And uh, this has been rolled out in six regions, and India is included in, as a part of it. And the grand prize is around 20,000 USD. So what is this all about? This is about developing new applications built using Google Apps, Google Drive APIs, and App Script. So you can still, you got two more days, you can still got time to go ahead and submit your ideas on 24th. That's the first uh, uh, cut deadline. So how many of you are interested? I'll tell you about the prizes. It's uh, pretty good. The semi-finalists for every region, up to 30 of them, would get Chromebooks. And all student team will get $1,000, and we've got highlight for female innovators. And the grand prize winner would be getting 20,000 USD, and students, if there's a student crowd which will be, uh, who's a grand prize winner, the, additionally, the faculty of the college will be getting 18,000 USD. So here are some of the links that you can follow in order to get more information about uh, uh, this contest. And I'm going to be talking about Google product forums and the top contributor program. And uh, the top contributor program, again, it's, uh, we have got 22 top contributors in India. And these top contributors are nothing but our evangelists on field who are able to talk about Google products and solve Google queries and help them online. Okay? At any point in time, they are always there, and all the TCs who are sitting out here in blue t-shirts, they are the people who are able to help and answer online queries. And this is a very active concept, and we are seeing a lot of traction in this, and we would like to go ahead and contribute more and support to this program in the very near future. And coming to the Google Web Academy program. Uh, how many of you have heard about Google Web Academy? Okay, so this is a program where we are tying up, we are coming up with online content, we are coming out with curriculum, where we are saying, we are tying up, we are tied up with uh, NIIT currently and a couple of uh, uh, large institutes in uh, Malaysia, where we are able to roll out certified courses for student as well as the professional business community. As of now, we have rolled out a business course which is there for 60 hours, 
which covers the essentials of how do you about AdWords and Ad, uh, AdSense and so on and so forth. And we are releasing this in 20 large uh, NIT institutions in the country, and we have already started enrolling uh, students in this.